So in today's video, we'll talk about how you can create your own dynamically allocated array. But before that, we're going to take a look at a set of questions that uh, will give you different and better solutions to your possible problem. Right. So first things first, what's a dynamically allocated array? A dynamically allocated array is something that uh, can be accessed in any function and the allocation and the allocation process is controlled by us, the programmer. Right. So usually you want that dynamically allocated array to be used in many places inside your uh, project. Now, if you need that, if you need that, I usually suggest that you use a, a statically allocated array that is also global. So what you can do here is instead, for example, if let's say we want an int array of, I don't know, 256 numbers, you can just say int I don't know, array of 256. And that's going to allocate 256 integers onto the global memory. And we can of course use this. So you can say array of, I don't know, 10 equals 17 and then printf uh, the result. So percent D backslash N array of 10. And there you go. The cool thing about global arrays is that they are automatically instantiated or initialized with the value zero. So you don't have to mem set it anywhere inside the project, right? In, nor inside the main, main function, nor inside the, your constructor ish function. Okay. So now that we got this over, this is the first question, right? If you want, uh, do you need an array used in many other places, not just in the function that is declared, right? So if you need that, I suggest you just use a global variable. Secondly, if you need an array of a uh, variable size, do you know the maximum amount you can store inside that array, right? The maximum amount of integers you can store. If so, you might be able to actually say, uh, actually declare it right off the bat with the uh, maximum amount of in of elements inside that array. So I say here, our maximum is 256, right? We know we cannot ever store more than 256 elements inside our array. We don't need more than that. If, if that's the case, I suggest you use this, but only if that uh, maximum amount of elements is not too high, right? So that it doesn't consume too much memory and is known. So do you know, do you know the maximum amount of elements, right? And is that, is that max amount too big, right? So that you don't waste memory. Like if I had um, an array in which the maximum amount of integers was, I don't know, 64,000 elements, but in most cases you won't get anywhere near a thousand or 2000, then I think it's uh, safe to say you might need a uh, dynamically allocated array. Now, if you want an array that is accessible from anywhere, it's also, it can also store many elements and you want to optimize for that amount of elements. So sometimes it's going to store a hundred elements, sometimes it's going to store 6,000 elements, right? If you want to optimize for that, then I suggest you use a dynamically allocated array. So in here, instead of doing this, if you actually answered yes to the third question, right? You should be using a dynamically allocated array and how to use it. Well, let's get over that right now. So to start with, we cannot actually use the array declaration notation here because this automatically allocates 256 uh, integers on the global memory. So what we have to do is instead get a pointer to the start of the memory that we want to allocate. To do this, we're just going to remove this and just say int asterisk array, right? So this is a pointer. It's not really a dynamically allocated array yet. It's just a pointer. So we have to point it to dynamically allocated array to do this. Well, to do this, we need a place where you're instantiating all the variables, right? So a sort of main function, start function, whatever that is that initializes all your, all your uh, actual variables. So to initialize this um, array, what you have to do is say array equals and here we can use C alloc and then this guy takes in basically first is the number of elements. So how many you want initially at least. So I don't know, for example, we can say 256 and then the size of each element, 
that is well size of integer because that's what we're storing inside our function our uh, array so this will initialize 256 integers but now since it's dynamically allocated and you control your allocation of that memory you also need to deallocate it once uh, you finished using it otherwise the system doesn't really know when you're done with it so at the end of the program just say free and our array right before we didn't have to because it was global memory and global memory is still you know, in a sort of way static to the program so it's going to be automatically deallocated at the end of the program in this case it's not so you have to free this memory and from that point you can actually use uh, the array as a simple array you can see here array of 10 equals 17 and, and then just print it on the screen so if i run this it's going to work because well this now behaves like an array now one thing that i suggest you do instead of just using an array you also have to uh, store the size of that array somewhere because if you want to uh, reallocate it if you want to change its size you kind of have to store it somewhere it doesn't store it on its own you cannot really get size of that array in C. So what you have to do is say, for example, size T, I don't know, um, array size, let's say, and that should be some number, right? Like 256, for example, as a baseline. And then you can actually use it here in C alloc, right? This is not dynamically allocated. It's allocated on the global memory. You don't have to really deallocate it. It's automatically deallocated by the uh, program. So when we run this, this is going to be exactly the same. Right, we have 17 and that's fine and dandy but but one more thing we said in the beginning that um this array is of variable size so at one point we're gonna have to change its size so how do we do that how do we actually for example double the amount of the elements inside our array well that's fairly simple to do first we have to change our array size because that's where we store it and we should actually have an updated reference to it i'm gonna say here array size so we want to double it whatever that is so times equals to that's, that's going to uh, just double our array size and then what we have to do is use the realloc function and realloc what takes as parameters is first the uh, pointer to the dynamically allocated whatever memory so array in this case and then the second parameter is the new size of that array so the new size is well our array size but it's in bytes so we have to multiply that by the amount of bytes inside our our integer right so this usually is four bytes but we never know but just calling realloc it's not enough because well this guy also reallocates memory right so it may move it because well it might not have enough space to just expand it you will have to move it somewhere else where it's enough space there so that means that you actually have to change the value of the array. That's where the return value of the realloc comes in. So you have to actually reassign the uh, previous pointer. So I'm going to say array equals realloc. And that's going to return the new, uh, the new location in memory for the dynamically allocated memory. It might be the same, but it might not, right? So you should actually use it like this. All right, and now if we try to use it right we still get 17 and even if we actually print f after reallocation it's going to work the same way because the memory is being copied over now one more thing before you go this is basically it in terms of uh, allocating dynamically allocated arrays and while well, changing their size and also freeing that memory but you should also check for nulls if you ever uh, get a null value here, for example, C alloc can return a null value, right? A null pointer. And when that happens, well, your program is gonna crash and that's not that great, right? So I think you should actually just check if array equals null and just print f an error, for example. Let, let me do f print f to the standard error and just say, uh, array not allocated not allocated for example and just return here one for example as an error uh, code and do the same thing when reallocating because also realloc can uh, return a null because you might not have uh, physically you might not have enough space or the memory might be actually 
fragmented. So even though you have like gigabytes upon gigabytes of uh, RAM, your memory might be used like, for example, half a gigabyte here, then 256 uh, megs here and so on, and you want a full gigabyte and nowhere is there a, a full chunk of one gigabyte available for the uh, memory allocator. So then uh, the allocation functions such as calloc and realloc actually return null, right? So you should actually um, check for null here and then do array not reallocated. One last thing I forgot to explain is that uh, I used calloc here instead of malloc because calloc, aside from having uh, you to actually pass in both the number of elements and its size, it automatically uh, sets all that memory to zero. So if you usually with arrays, you want that, but if you don't want that, use malloc and that's also fine. It's going to be a bit faster. So that's about it with dynamically allocated arrays, right? Think about these questions, the use cases, if you really, really, really need it. And if you do use it as such, check for null. It's important to check for null. Do you see alloc if possible? and reallocate properly your array. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. And well, see you guys next time. Take care, bye.